Hi everyone, welcome to our Aquarium Online Academy this morning. We're going to be going on a very fun adventure with a couple of friends who you might have just seen one um, within that intro we were looking at. We're going to be talking with Captain Joe today and exploring sea otters, their diets, how we prepare food here at the aquarium, lots of different fun topics. With that being said, if during this program you do have any observations, any questions you do want to share, we do have a live text line. You can send those um, texts into those questions and you can see that number right here on screen. That number is 562-286-188. But if you are watching this program not live and after the hours of 10 to 1030 in the morning, you can still send in your questions and observations. But instead of using this number right here, um, you can t um, email us at live at lbaop.org. Remember, if you are watching live and you, if you do have those questions, um, send them into this text sign over here because I'm definitely not alone in the studio today. Um, I have Talia who's going to be on one of the computers changing all the different things around us taking us on this adventure with captain joe today and then i also have my friend james who's on our question computer so if you have any questions anything like that james will let me know and pass him on over if you want to say hello to james you can too make sure that he's staying tuned in but i do want to make sure we have enough time for this otter adventure otters are definitely very cool cool animals with lots of different adaptations and also very big appetites so with that being said i want to start off just by meeting captain joe first so let's see if we can meet captain joe hey there captain joe Hello boys, Hello boys and girls. And girls. Welcome, Welcome to the Aquarium, to the Aquarium of the Pacific. Pacific. I'm, Captain I'm Captain Joe of the Ocean, Ocean Ranger, Ranger and I'm here with my co-host co Sea Otter, Otter today in the Northern, in the Northern Pacific, Pacific Gallery at the, at the Aquarium. Aquarium. And we're here, and we're to, here investigate to investigate about, about food, food, food today, today, Sea Otter. Otter. Now, I do now I do know, know that food is one of your favorite, favorite things. things. Sea Otters, otters have a huge appetite, but unfortunately today, Sea Otter, we're not here to eat food. We're here to investigate food. I know. We're going to learn today about how our food is prepared for our animals and also also, how, our how our food is, food fed, is fed out, out to our, our animals, animals as well. As well. So sea otter, otter, let's, let's team, up. team up. You go, you that, go way, that way, find more, more about, about the preparation, preparation of the food, of the food and, I'll and I'll go this, this way, way and, I'll and I'll find out more about, about how that how food, food is given out given to out the animals. animals. Ready? Ready? Let's, let's do it. Awesome. So that sounds good. We're going to let Captain Joe and our sea otter friend go and explore and discover some things. But while they investigate, I want us to investigate and play a game in the meantime. So let's see if we can get our morning brains up and running with some puzzle time. So let's see. Once we start our puzzle, we can start to think about what animal we may be observing today. So let me step off of this screen. Ooh, we're seeing all these tiles pop up. What colors do you see? You see the color red right here. Hmm, do you think this is an animal? Ooh, we're seeing some things in the background maybe that you're noticing. Maybe like little rocks and plants and stuff. I'm going to give us a second to just be able to look at this puzzle. And if you have any guesses as to what we may be looking at, feel free to text them into that text line we have on screen. Okay. So, hmm. Does this look like a fish? Uh, maybe not. We're not seeing too many scales or anything like that. Does this look kind of hard? What is this right here? This little black dot? Maybe someone's eye? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out um, with seeing the rest of this puzzle. Oh my gosh. It's a crab! 
Did any of you guys guess crab with the red color and everything? Ooh, you can see one of the little black dots you saw was in fact one of its eyes. Its other eyes is over there and it's within its little home. So you can see all the different little anemones and plants in here. So here we have figured out our puzzle, our very first puzzle time. We will have different activities throughout our program today uh, that we'll definitely get a chance to see. But let's see let me move off of here if you want to get a better look at that so let's go and find out what is going on it looks like sea otter and captain gerald um, have been on their mission to find out about how we prepare and deliver food uh, to the animals so first before we do anything else once since we got done with our puzzle time let's go and check in with sea otter all right, that's a great question. First of all, my name is Ron Mortensen, and I'm the assistant curator here for the Bird and Mammal Group. Behind us, we have the food prep room. This is where all the food for all the animals, including you, comes from. All right, Sea Otter, well, as you can tell, this is a busy time in the morning. This is food preparation time. Behind you, we have food preparation going on for the fishes. Over here, we have food preparation going on for the sea otters. Anyone interested in that? Yeah. Food preparation going on for the birds. And finally, over here, we have food preparation going on for the seals and the sea lions. So we got a lot of food preparation going on in this room at this time of day, every day. A lot of different kinds of animals who are eating so many different fruits that we have to prepare for them. That must take a lot of coordination and everything. We can definitely see those whiteboards and all those different schedules they have to keep for all these different animals to eat. Because we have really, really small animals that live here at the aquarium to really, really big animals that live here as well. So let's see if Rob can tell us a little bit about how they know which food goes to which animal. All right, sea otter, so here we've got food prep going on for all your little otter buddies. We have to divide it up so we know who gets which, because each otter gets a little bit different food. You see these are smaller bins. we got larger bins over here. We mix all their food together, and then we take it out, and we put it into these nice stainless steel bins, which we wear on our pouch right here on our hips. So when we go in to feed, we have our hands free. That works out really well. You can see we have shrimp. We have clams and we have squid. As a matter of fact, I think I still have some squid I need to cut up. You want to help me? All right. And we just weigh everything out based on what each otter needs. And each one's a little different. So we'll just cut up this squid here. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. It's even yours. We'll just get this all cut up here. And they can eat whole squid, but the reason we cut it up is because it makes it easier for training. It gives us bite-sized pieces, kind of like popcorn to a sea otter. So that works out really well. Of course, seals and sea lions swallow their food whole, so we can feed them pretty big fish without having to worry about it. But sea otters chew their food. And we're done. We will just put this in the bin. Yeah, all the different food that's prepared, right? Rob himself said, depending on the animal, we'll have to cut it up in different ways because some animals, like the sea otters we're exploring today, they're going to be chewing their food. So that's why Rob is cutting up that squid. While other animals, like the sea lions we have here, they'll swallow their food whole so they can leave the food whole for them to be able to eat. So definitely, depending on the animal, they're going to have those different bins for them, that different preparation, and even the different types of fish they may be eating. Just like us, um, animals can have their favorite foods as well. Um, and you might be wondering, well, how do animals like otters find foods out there in the ocean? Um, and what do otters like to eat as well? I see that I got a question in as to what do baby otters like to eat? And otters can have a rather diverse diet. They can eat things like clams and crabs. But one of the otter's favorite foods are actually sea urchins. So maybe we can get a picture of a sea urchin up for us to look at really quickly. Because if you're thinking about the different foods that I mentioned, you may have noticed a lot of them have really hard shells. And hmm, how do you think sea otters are able to get those animals out of those shells? 
maybe you've heard that sea otters know how to use different tools. So sea otters, when they're out there in the oceans, let, ooh, actually, before I talk a little bit more, here's that picture of the sea urchin. So you can get a good idea um, as to how that shell can be hard. So with that hard shell right there, sea otters when they're out in the ocean sometimes they'll find rocks or different tools they like to use and then when it's time for them to eat things like the sea urchin they'll take out that rock because their fur creates lots of different pockets and within those pockets they're able to store different things imagine if we kept stuff in our armpits right like let's say we're all going on a walk to the park today right so we're walking we're walking around the park and oh my gosh i found this great rock so i have my rock and I'm going to keep it in my armpit. And I'm going to only take out my rock when I want to look at it, when I want to use it for something. That's what sea otters essentially do. They have those pockets because of their fur, and then they're able to store things in there. So when it's time for a sea otter to eat things like this really nice sea urchin, they're able to take that rock out, crack that shell open, and eat what's inside. So sea otters have very cool adaptations and abilities like that. So like that, they can eat what they want out there in the ocean and they won't be eating things like fish um, or anything like that because that takes too much time or ener and energy so they'll be eating lots of things like the um, these urchins I mentioned those clams and crabs maybe the occasional octopus if they can manage to catch it but things that don't move around too much because they're also not the best swimmers believe it or not I do see though, before we move on to our next thing, is I got another question as to what Captain Joe's favorite sea animals are. And wow, friends, I can tell you Captain Joe is a rather complex character. He has lots of different favorite animals. One of Captain Joe's favorite animals, which don't tell the otter because I know we're talking about otters today, but he actually likes one of our other marine mammals more here at the aquarium. He loves the sea lions. He loves sea lions so much. Sometimes we'll have to go and find him up there at the exhibit. So hopefully Captain Joe doesn't get distracted today and we'll be able to um, find out more um, from Rob right now as to all these different things that animals do eat. So with that being said, let's go check back with Rob and the sea otter to see um, how we know how much each animal gets to eat now. Well, you're probably wondering how we keep it all together and we get everybody the right amount of food. The way that we do that is by using these dry erase boards. And each one of the animals is listed on there by name and also by color. Their color corresponds to their bucket. They have a little tag on there, so we always know, for instance, Shelby always has the bucket with the blue tag. Blue is her color. It's also the shape in the case of the animal so that we can hold up a shape and get them to come to us wherever we're at in the exhibit. actually keep records of what everyone is eating like you're looking at, at that whiteboard that's definitely a lot of work okay well we've talked about how they prepare it uh, the food items we offer them but how do we get it from the kitchen to the animals the next question right um, so let's check in with Captain Joe. He was finding someone to tell us a little bit more about how we give the food to our animals so let's see if we can go find Captain Joe Welcome back, boys and girls. We're here investigating how we feed our fish at the aquarium. Why are you in a wetsuit? Well, while I was investigating, I found out that we have scuba divers that help us feed all of our animals. And to make sure that all of the animals are getting fed in our large exhibits, like this big one behind me, they actually get inside of the water and help feed all of the animals. So our divers actually go into the water to feed the animals. Let's learn a little bit more about how they do this. Here are some, are of, some the of the tools, tools that, that our scuba, scuba divers, divers use while feeding our animals. animals. This right here is a feeding bucket. We'll use these on our larger animals here at the aquarium, like our rays or our Queensland grouper. And the divers will get right inside the water and feed them right from this bucket. It is very, very cool to see. Now, our, now smaller our smaller animals, animals believe, believe it or not, it or not some of them love vegetables, vegetables broccoli, broccoli, lettuce, lettuce and, the and the others, they, they like very small, small worms, worms that we can actually squirt, squirt inside, inside the cracks in our coral, and they love, and they love trying, trying to, get to get at them. them. Now, now this, this is very cool. cool. These are these grabbers, are grabbers, and our divers will use these at the surface to feed animals like sharks and our sea turtles. 
Now, boys and girls, we've learned a lot from the observations we've made here in our tropical gallery. I think what we should do is go meet back up with Sea Okay, great idea, Captain Joe. Let's go ahead and meet back up with Sea Otter and see what she has been up to. Oh, hey, Sea Otter. Looks like you found lots of buckets of food ready to be fed out to different animals. Wait, what's happening? Sea Otter? Oh, what are you no, doing, no, Sea Otter? That's, that's not your food. That's not your food. Your food's in the refrigerator. Let's put this with your food and we'll go get yours. Your feeding time's coming. Come on. All right, Sea Otter. You ready to see where we keep your food? We keep it in the refrigerator. Let's go on in here. Here we are. This is the refrigerator. I know, it's cold. You should be good with that fur. I don't have fur on. I had to wear my sweatshirt. Here's your food right here. You can see your little bin is already gone. It's on its way up to the exhibit. So we got to get up there so that you can go get your food for the morning. I'm so relieved, friends, that we got a chance to check on Sea Otter before she ate food that wasn't hers. But it does seem like she's going to be eating pretty soon, though. I wonder what happens after we prepare all the food, right? So what happens in your home? When you get the food ready, do you just leave it laying around? Hmm, no, right? So let's see what Rob can tell us about cleaning up now. Now that we prepared all the food for the day, now we have to do the most important step. We have to clean the kitchen. Just like any restaurant or hospital, we use stainless steel so it's really easy to clean. We even use stainless steel scrub pads and lots and lots of soap. Hot water and a little elbow grease and the kitchen will be all sparkly and new. cleaning looks like they keep the food preparation kitchen really nice and clean which is definitely really important when you're preparing so much food every single day for so many different animals and i know friends we just learned so much about how we prepare food here at the aquarium how we give it to the animals um the different types of ways that they might be eating um the different foods they might be eating as well so Let's take a quick break now to play another game. We're gonna do another puzzle time. So let me step off of this screen so we can do our puzzle time. And if you have any guesses, once again, feel free to send them in. But let's see, we'll get started with our puzzle. Ooh, so our puzzle's gonna be blue. Ooh, what observations are you making right now? Well, one thing is we can definitely see the color blue, right? What are some other colors you notice in this? I'm seeing the yellow right here, and then we have the blue, but also like a darker blue over here. What about the background? We're seeing another animal in their home, right? We can see different rocks, maybe anemones in the back. Hmm, do you think this is a blue crab? Maybe. We saw a red crab earlier. Uh, maybe not, right? We can see the body shape looks a little bit different. So we're seeing this kind of oval and this triangle here. Hmm. I'll give you a second, friends, to look at this puzzle and for you to think about it. What animal could this be that is bluish and yellow and its body shape is different? It's underwater too, right? Hmm. Maybe Miss Talia can help us and we'll finish up this puzzle. She'll do our big reveal. Oh. Oh my gosh. Here we go, our grand reveal of fish. So we're looking at a blue palette tank. So you can see those blues, right? We're looking at the tail and the back. You can see its full body now, its eyes, its little fin, its gills. And we can see the other fish in the background too now that it lives with within its exhibit. So really, really fun puzzle time, friends. I'll let you look at that picture just for a second. Um, if you want to go ahead and get a good look as to what our puzzle was. But now that we have finished our puzzle, I want to go ahead and go back to what we were talking about, right? 
So, um, so part of caring for the animals, like this blue palette thing, like the sea otters that we've been talking about, is offering them that yummy, nutritious food that we got a good look at. But what if they get sick? We do have places like this here at the aquarium as well. This is our Molina Animal Care Center. Um, so this is how we care for our animals here at the aquarium. And maybe we can talk to one of our experts here, Shara, who can tell us more about this Molina Animal Care Center. Welcome, Ocean, Ocean Rangers. Rangers. My name is Shara Seals. Seals. I, am I am a veterinary technician, technician here at the Molina Animal, Animal Care, Care Center. Center. This is our vet hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I work with Dr. Lance Adams, our veterinarian. Do you guys ever go to the dentist? Yeah, me too. Well, some of our animals here at the aquarium need to go to the dentist as well. So today we're gonna clean some teeth on a sea otter. In the wild, sea otters use shells like, like clams, clams and urchins, and urchins to, naturally to naturally brush, brush their, teeth. their teeth. But here but in the aquarium, we help we them out a little bit. bit. We don't, we feed, don't them feed them shells. shells. We, take we take them to the, the dentist. dentist. Once, Once a day, day they, get they get their, their teeth, teeth brushed, brushed with a toothbrush, with a toothbrush just, just like us. Like us. And then, and then once a year when the, when the otters, otters come for their dentist, dentist appointment, appointment they, have they have the same, same thing done as you and I would when we go. Let's go over some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth. Here we have a fake plastic otter skull. This shows you what their teeth look like. This is a polisher. This polisher is used to polish their teeth. So we have to use toothpaste as well. And this is bubblegum flavored. Use this toothpaste with the polisher to polish their teeth. And we make sure we get all the crevices. We also use this scaler. This gets in between the teeth where the polisher doesn't reach. And then we also have hand tools that we can use. These kind of act as dental floss. They can get in the really small crevices. So we can pick all of the plaque out and keep their teeth clean. All right. Now that you guys have seen some of the tools that we use to clean their teeth, let's do it for real. Today, we're gonna clean one of our sea otters, Betty. Gotta put my protective gear on. One thing though, they have to be asleep when we do this. So it's better for them and it's easier for us. So let's go check it out. Wow, thank you so much, Shara. Um, did you all know that sea otters have to go to the dentist? Hmm. What I'm really wondering about from what she mentioned is if sea otters like the bubblegum toothpaste too. I know that I do. But let's see what it looks like to go to the dentist for a sea otter.
Okay, there we go, friends. It seems like my microphone gave up on me, um, but we are back, and I'm definitely very excited because I do want to talk to you about how important it is for animals like our sea otters uh, to be able to participate in their own health care, whether that be going to the dentist like we just saw, them being okay getting their teeth brushed every day. They also get physicals every year just like we do when we, we go to the doctor, just like that the doctor can make sure that we're nice and healthy. The veterinarians make sure that our otters are really nice and healthy. Our otters will also get weighed at least twice a week um, too to make sure they're really nice healthy weight and if our mammologists notice anything they can always give them more food, give them a little bit less food if they need to lose a little bit of weight but all those things are really important that sea otters are just very comfortable around the people who they are working with, which are mammologists here at the aquarium. Um, just like that, if they ever need to get medication, eye drops, or anything like that, that they are okay with that occurring as well. And we'll do that through that positive reinforcement. If you been watching this program today it's been very evident very obvious to us sea otters love to eat so that's one way we can also get them to be comfortable um is with that positive reinforcement so if they let you um give them their eye drops and things like that you can give them a really nice handful of food after so that they know okay i'm doing good this is okay <laughs> so that's definitely a lot of fun um oh i do see we have a question from oscar who's asking how do you know if an otter is sick a it's a really great question, Oscar. So here, you might have heard me saying the term right now. We do have a very special team who works with our sea otters here, and they're known as our mammologist. Um, so they're going to be working with our mammals here at the aquarium. So our sea otters are one of them. So since they're working with the sea otters so often, they're very familiar with their behaviors, what they usually do or anything like that. So if the sea otters are not acting like them, their usual selves, if they're not eating like they usually do or doing what they usually do, then a mammologist can get a closer eye on them and observe if their behaviors keep being a little bit odd, then they can talk to our veterinary staff that we have here at the aquarium, and then they can take a closer look at that otter that might be sick. Another question that I got is, do otters only go to the doctor when they're sick? Another really great question. So no, sea otters don't just go to the doctor when they're sick. Um, they also go for those yearly physicals I was talking about and also just for routine checkups. So like that, we can check in throughout the year to make sure they're just really nice and healthy and still doing well. And if they need any extra vitamins or medication, um, that's also another time that our veterinary staff is able to um, take a closer look at that. So it's more like a year-round type of thing um, for them as well. But really great questions, friends, um, because sea otters are definitely very, very cool and very special and important out there to our oceans. So I'm really glad we got to explore with Captain Joe today. But I do have a question of the day I want to go ahead and do with all of you. So let's see what our question of the day is. Ooh, name a food we feed to our sea otters is our question of the day. Hmm, we went over a few of them. Let's see, do we have any options for this one? Let me move off of this screen. Ooh, so you can see our sea otters eating several different things and also doing different behaviors. Trying to get that shell open. Ooh, we can take a close look at that. So if you got a close enough look at the video of what our sea otters are eating, that was one of the examples that they do like to eat um, clams. Maybe Talia can find a picture of just one of our sea otters eating here at the aquarium and we can take a close look at that too. But clams was one of them we talked about. You might have said urchins because urchins is a big one we talked about when we looked at that picture earlier, how they keep different tools in their pockets. They also like to eat crabs sometimes, things that don't really move around too much, right? Sometimes they'll make sea star sandwiches out there in the ocean and they'll munch on those. So like I said, a very wide range of the different things um, that they will be eating. Ooh, and Talia pulled up this picture of the sea otter eating that nice piece of clam right there, which might have also been a thing that you named. Um, so they like to eat clams here at the aquarium. We also give them squids. So 
a very good diet. I'm definitely very jealous because all this food that they're eating is restaurant quality. So we got a chance to talk about our food preparation, how we're able to do that. Let me step off of this screen if you want to get a closer look at this otter. Um, the different ways that we're able to monitor their foods, keep track of everything and everything like that. So it's been a lot of fun. And before we depart explorers, I do want to go ahead and say goodbye to Otter and Captain Joe. So let's see if we can get one good last look at them and we can say bye to them. Bye, Captain Joe. Bye, Otter. So thank you so much for joining us, friends. It's definitely been lots of fun exploring all these different things um, with you. If you remember, if you do still have any last questions, anything like that, you can still send them in. But instead of using that live text sign, we are going to want to use that email um, that we had up on screen earlier. So that email is live at lbaop.org. Org. Um, and you can send in any last minute questions or anything like that. It's right here on the screen. But once again, thank you so much for joining us today, friends, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.